so today we have with us a sister piedad uh, now she belongs to the the franciscan hospitaller sisters of the immaculate conception uh, she has been a, a mighty warrior and uh, we welcome you sister piedad uh, to share the testimony of your journey uh, with with the lord amidst the situation of the sickness give thanks to the lord for his love endures forever i am sister piedad fernandes i am based in goa india in a village called banaulim in may 2020 i developed a dry cough which was taken very lightly by me thinking it was uh, a normal thing i used to get cough once in a way and i thought it would pass but little did i know this cough would be very fatal for me in the month of june 2020 my cough started increasing and everyone thought since it was rainy season here in india it may be due to the weather changes in july i started getting fever and it would come and go after i take the paracetamol tablets and since it was locked down because of covid we were not able to see doctor also and since we have here in a, it's our home uh, where i stay right now is a home for the aged and we have sisters nurses looking after the uh, the elderly in our house the sister started giving me the medication thinking it was something normal and i would take those tablets and i would feel better no one was doubting anything even covid because it was covid time because the symptoms were not of covid it was just fever and cough but in august the fever started increasing the temperatures going up to 104 degrees it became a reason for worry but i don't know somehow i did not take it seriously i continued taking the tablet and doing my work i went to doctor he immediately told me do covid test and gave some meditation i was very sure it was not covid so i came back home and did not go for covid test but my fevers started to persist and now i started deteriorating in my health food intake was very poor started losing weight so now i decided to go for the covid test and i went to apollo hospital here in goa where my covid reports came negative since the fever started to come every 3 hours we consulted one of our doctor sister one belonging to our same congregation we have a sister who is a doctor we consulted her where she, because she is in chennai so we consulted her she said you please take this medicines which i will prescribe to you and i started taking but after a week i started continuing with those same fevers when i when she saw that the fevers were not coming down and i was deteriorating she said this fevers are not a normal thing better you come to chennai as early as possible now it is covid time we don't have sufficient proper transport here to go to chennai the only way is the flight now the question remains here with the fever and cough i cannot travel because the flights would not take me thinking it is a covid of course i had my covid negative certificate since i was having fever they would not allow me to go but somehow by the grace of god i managed to go to chennai and i reached chennai even if i had fever in between i had to take tablets when at the airport i had to take tablet i reached chennai when i reached chennai even my sisters who knew me before who had seen me when they saw me they started getting panicky and they started getting worried what exactly is wrong with me and there itself i think it was like a calvary for me when i reached there they suspected that it may be tuberculosis after doing the tests all kind of tests whichever they could do they did that uh, reports came negative and i start going uh, started continued uh, deteriorating in my health on the third day i became very serious i suddenly became breathless all my parameters started going down and they had to shift me to the icu they shifted me to the icu and my uh, pressure my veins started collapsing they could not even get a line for me 
nobody could understand what exactly is wrong but the test continued i lost around 12 kg of weight but even in this situation i was very calm and cool never felt that i had something serious and i was told since we religious we don't have our family members with us i was told that i have to inform my family members that i am not well and the situation is not so good but i told i i told them i don't feel the need to tell them because the sisters are taking care of me but uh, the sister doctor who was treating me she said we have to inform them because something can if anything happens serious then it would not be nice that they are not knowing about it so i told them okay you can uh, we'll try but i was not very happy because i did not want my parents to know that i am so sick especially my mother because i knew that she would get panicky about it but since she was insisting i told her okay you inform my brother my elder brother and he is not here in uh, goa also he is in uk they informed him and the tests were going on till now they have not found found anything it was almost two weeks going to be getting over and they cannot find out what exactly is wrong with me finally after doing all the test they found there were lymph nodes in my body what they did is they removed two nodes from my one from my neck and one from my armpit and they sent for test and the test of this comes that i am suffering from hodgkin's lymphoma a rare uh, cancer a blood cancer and it's at the first fourth stage and the worst was that i was having a node which was quite big in size which was in my test chest and it was just under the wind pipe and that was the reason i was getting uh, breathless because it was blocking my wind pipe and stopping the uh, air to pass and because of that i was not able to breathe and off and on i had to be shifted to the icu because of this problem and after they have found out the oncologist was called in and i was told by him that i am having a rare sickness a rare cancer called Hod hodgkin's lymphoma and said that yes sister there is luckily a treatment but somehow your cancer has reached to the fourth stage it is a bit late this is what he said in this situation for me it was like nothing i i don't know from where that grace came for me calmly i told him okay okay doctor i said and i was very calm and cool feeling that uh, some shock or somebody when i when we uh, we are told any sickness and all will get a shock or something like that. nothing and he told me now i have to be in chennai for 6 months and the treatment would be chemotherapy six cycles of chemotherapy and that he would immediately the very next day would start the chemotherapy for me so i said okay doctor and he told me whatever is to be done and how it will happen all that he gave me the explanation and he went when he left i only said i just closed my eyes and i said thank you jesus in this sickness I experience your love more and more for me and I said you never left me Jesus and I know that now also you will not leave me then I only communicated to one of my sisters whom I could share with about this sickness and no one else not even to my family members to anybody else and I continued praying uh, we had a lot of uh, online adorations and um, bible studies bible courses so many things were available since I was alone in the hospital and i was uh, closed up in a room because nobody could visit me also since it was covid and i was deteriorating in health they were uh, not allowing anybody to come close to me because i may get covid or they were avoiding this kind of things the nurses and whoever doctors once in a way used to come and go so i've made use of this opportunity especially i would uh, pray the divine mercy chaplets i would attend online adoration especially the adoration of logos retreat center conducted by father father jose vetiankal in bangalore and the first thing what i did was just pray this bible quotations wait for the lord be strong and take heart wait for the lord psalm 27 13 14 the next i would pray is by the wounds of jesus i am healed the first peter 2 24 the next i would pray is i shall not die i shall live and declare the works of the lord psalm 1188 17 and this is my favorite verse from the bible which i very often pray then comes the first dose of 
chemotherapy. The very next day, they made all the uh, arrangements and I was given the first chemo. But even to give that chemo, there was a problem because I was very weak and my veins would not be supporting the chemo. So what they do is they give me on the ne on my neck in the straight in the in the main line the first chemo. Of course they had planned to give me uh, the put me a uh, chemo port for me, but it would take time and they did not want to delay. It. So they gave me this to the main line of my neck. But when they brought in the chemo medicines. After giving me some brief, I saw there was one bottle which was red in color. When I saw that, I immediately said, Jesus, they are giving me your blood. Your blood is my medicine that is going back, going into my veins right now. And that was really my strength because each time when they give me the chemo, that red bottle comes, I immediately used to think of the blood of Jesus and say, Jesus, your blood is going in my body. So nothing will happen to me. Then they started the second bottle and uh, since I was very big and the problem of my breathlessness started again and immediately they had to shift me to the ICU. In the, in the beginning, I had to be put on oxygen, all that they did. But in my mind and continuously, I went on saying, Jesus, your blood is flowing in my veins. Your blood is flowing in my veins. At three o'clock, I never missed, even when I was taking chemo, lying on the bed, I never missed my adoration at three o'clock. And that very night after taking the first chemo, my fever left me. Until my last chemo, I never got the fever again. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Continuously, I would say, Jesus, by your blood, the nodes are melting and going from my body. Even when I used to go to the bathroom, I used to tell Jesus, all the nodes are gone because you have washed my, uh, my body with your blood. Then came the second dose after 15 days and all the others were worried like first time I would get uh, get the same reactions. So they shifted me to the ICU. By the grace of God, I did not get any reaction and I continued to pray the same prayers by saying, Jesus, your blood is passing through my veins. And my adoration, Divine Mercy Chaplets, that is what I would do. When it was time for my third chemo, my blood count was very low. So they had to give me an injection to raise my blood count. And they gave me an injection, which gave me severe bo bone pain. It would last for two days, three days, plus the chemo. But I would continue having that strength from the Lord. And I would continue to pray the same prayers which I was praying. And somehow I finished the third chemo too. And when it came for the fourth chemo, my blood, blood count still continued to be low and they gave me the injection and after giving the injection suddenly i don't know from where i told myself my chemos will no this is what after this after my fourth chemo the doctor told me sister i will have to see whether i can continue to give you the chemo because your blood counts are low and then what happens is that I cannot continue giving you these injections. Then suddenly when I was lying down, I told myself, my treatment will get over in December. I will not take more than that because my treatment was supposed to be six months that would get over only in February. And I went on telling Jesus also, Jesus, you will finish my treatment in, in December. When the month of December came, when I had to take my chemo, the doctor tells me, I am finishing this fourth cycle of yours in this month because I cannot give you any more because you are have you are having a problem of blood. But you, I cannot give you this chemo anymore. I have to stop it. I said, okay, doctor. Then he tells. Me, then I asked him immediately. I can go back in this after this chemo, doctor. He said, no, no, sister. We have to see whether you can go because I have to think what has what is next for you. But I continue telling myself, no, I will not take any more treatment. So when, on the 15th of December, he gave me the fourth cycle of chemo. And that day he told me, this chemo stops, sister. And on 28th of December, I will be doing your scan. 28th came, I went for the scan. When I got the report, the doctor saw my report. And there he tells me, congratulations. I don't need to give you any more treatment because I was planning to give you radiation after this because I cannot give you any more chemos. But your lip nodes are completely come down and you don't need any more treatment. Immediately I asked him, doctor, now I can go. 
yes sister you can go back to goa without any problem you have no need of any more treatment and the best thing is that he had told me initially sister you will have to come regularly after every 3 months for a checkup now he tells me sister you can come on just for a checkup after 6 months i and so i came back to goa in the month of january i went back now in the month of march and i the doctor when he saw me and he did only a blood test and he tells me sister you don't need even a pet scan during my stay in hospital i was introduced to happy family ministries and that time brother johnson was giving bible classes to the happy families i started listening to him to the word of god every day through him and i started to learn the truth of the word of god in a way this sickness brought me closer to the word of god and that is why the first the word of god that i said is praise the lord for his good for his mercy and yours forever this is what i had learned from brother johnson and it is through brother johnson i got the number of sumitra the word of god sumitra gave me because that time i had told her that doctor told me uh, that my lymph nodes are not completely gone but they are, they are coming down and uh, she gave me the word of god the mountains melt like wax before the lord for the lord of all the earth all the nodes in your body are melting and going and now i say even anything comes to me now i say i can do all things through christ who strengthens me thing so there is that i cannot do even if i feel a little pain here and there i immediately tell myself i can do all things through christ who strengthens me. and that was my strength in my sickness this is the glory that he has given me and now he calls me to continue his mission that he had entrusted to me all glory to god thank you jesus sister the scripture which you said um psalms 118 17 i will not die but i will live to give glory to god how true in your case because when you have had a diagnosis report uh, which was of a fourth stage cancer and uh, doctors were telling you treatment is available and yet it is far too late for you and you have been opening your mouth and speaking this scripture promise over your life that you will not die but you will live to give glory to god and this is god's glory that today uh, in spite of that um, report which tends to make so many brothers and sisters who receive a report of that uh, you know extent uh, you know to live in fear and um, to to come to a space of hopelessness you have been a uh, sp- the word of god over your, yourself and that word has become flesh i I'm, i'm sure you would have been sharing your testimony with those people that you come across but today on this very platform uh, you've come and as you have shared it is all glory to god praise god sister uh, i like one more uh, point which you said that when you got the diagnosis that it is stage 4 that to after several weeks of uh, you know getting all the tests been done you mentioned that you closed your eyes and uh, you said uh, you know you could experience the love of god uh, amidst the sickness now uh, sister for you um, for a person who's a, who's a, a religious sister who has given your life uh, you know entirely uh, in service to serve um, others and uh, amidst all of that when you have had an experience of a sickness so what kind of thoughts if at all uh, did did they cross your mind like you have given your you committed your entire life for the love of god you have committed yourself in service and uh, when i had the opportunity through you sister to visit the home uh, the, in 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 this month itself uh we uh, we saw that you know you are reaching out to so many elderly mamas and as well as your your sisters there so when you yourself have been doing all of this and there comes the um, diagnosis report so what what were your thoughts around that time and the reason why uh, i'm asking you this sister is because and i'm sure that it is going to bless a lot of people because uh, we have uh, a lot uh, of uh, people that i minister to and i'm sure many of my uh, warrior sisters are also ministering uh, there is one pertinent question which comes is that 
uh, I've been so religious. I, I've been going for mass. I've been in the parish council. Maybe I serve in the Legion of Mary. I'm, I'm doing this. I, I, I'm, I'm like, you know, reaching out. I do charity. And when diagnosis like this comes, there is a big question mark. Why me? Why me when I have been so good? And there comes a, a complaining a mode, you know, which which is not really what we expect uh, when when troubles come in. But it has happened, and I have seen uh, quite a few uh, cases who really uh, find it difficult to ex uh, to accept a, a diagnosis of that kind. So, uh, like, I just wanted you to share your experience and how you would have uh, handled uh, that. That diagnosis report that day, which came in when you were at Chennai Hospital. No, our vocation is a free gift of God. Nothing is mine. And I cannot claim anything for myself. The only thing I can claim is Jesus Christ, who knows what I can handle, what I'm not able to handle. And when his strength is there with us, I don't have to get frightened, even if the sickness comes to me. That's why I think I was able to say, Jesus, thank you. So, all, so this, it is, all this is what I'm doing, the services, all that is, it's only a free gift given by God to me. It would have been given to somebody else and not for me. Jesus could have chosen somebody else and not me to serve him. But he, out of his mercy and compassion, has chosen me. So when I get a sickness, I don't need to complain because I know he is my strength. He is going to give me victory over this sickness. So I, I, as I told you, I did not have to get worried about that report. That's why I could, I just close my eyes. And I, I'm today, if you ask me, I, I'm thinking from where it came. My sisters there were around me, they were crying. And I just closed my eyes and they used to ask from where you are getting a smile on your face. It's, it's, it's uh, just uh, Jesus uh, walking uh, with us. And my vocation is, as I say, I continue to say it's a free gift. I don't merit it, but yet in his mercy, the Lord has given me and he has chosen me to serve his people. And if it is a gift, he will take care of that gift. He takes care of everything. And so he will continue to take care of. Nothing can touch us when Jesus is with us. The devil may try to, turn, but he will not have victory over us because the victory belongs to Jesus Christ. Thank That's you, why Jesus. I could say, Jesus, through this sickness, you are with me. Yeah, yes, sister. This one point uh, has come out very beautifully, wherein uh, you said that this vocation, this calling of uh, living a, a, a religious life, the anointing that is upon you, the calling that is upon you is his mercy that he has chosen you. Uh, sister, like, you know, I can really uh, relate with that, uh, what you have said, because now, even when I um, spend time sharing the word of God with people who have the affliction, and when, when they get the, the truth of the gospel of Christ, they feel so thankful, they feel so obliged, they feel so, uh, you know, humbled that I'm giving them my time uh, and, and explaining the word of God and, and showing them the truth from the gospel. And actually, I'm I'm really uh, like you know prompted so many times to even share with them that you don't have to thank me. The Lord has chosen me to share His gospel with you. So it's it's His grace and His mercy that He looked upon me that 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 I can be doing this. I can I am entrusted this. So so the word of God tells us that He has enabled us, and and it's very beautifully come out as as you have said that. Whatever you are doing as, as a religious sister, whatever you are serving, the very calling to this life is his, his, his gift. And you opened your mouth and you said that, uh, thank you, Jesus, for loving me. And it really goes back to uh, the scripture promise of 1 Thessalonians 5, 18. In everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. And this is exactly what you did. In the situation of a diagnostic report, that too, which spoke of stage four, wherein doctor also felt that no treatment is available, it is late. You spoke that word of thanksgiving, that experience of is available in, in, in your life. And, and that is what is, is the expectation from every believer that in every situation, in everything that we encounter, let us know that 
we are required to give thanks to God because that is His will for us. So, so sister, another point that you spoke of was uh, regarding um, the treatment which involved six cycles and you needed uh, to go through it uh, right through February of 21. But you were continually speaking about you having to, uh, like, you know, you're finishing it off by December so that you can, like, you know, pack your bag and come back to Goa as soon as possible and you wouldn't want to be in, in that, uh, you know, hospital or the, the phase of treatment. And uh, whatever you were saying, uh, when, when the time came for your, for around your fourth chemotherapy, you said that, um, the doctor himself uh, said that there is he cannot give you but his reason was something else he said that he cannot give you not because he feels you don't need it he couldn't give you because he felt your blood count your your your, your counts were not supporting giving you more medicine so, so many many times we can have this situation that okay if there is a treatment uh, i need to complete my treatment and uh, if I am not able to complete the treatment for any reason, be it even a reason of uh, monetary, a financial constraint, a person is not able to complete it. We, the person can get into a, a, a block thinking that, oh, I have not completed my treatment means now I am not going to be well or I am not going to receive my complete healing. But here, the, the way by which the treatment was stopped was thinking that the counts are too low to uh, carry on with further treatment. But actually, that was a way by which the Lord had actually stopped any more dowsing of chemotherapy into your body so whatever you needed even though you didn't want to take it but it was the doctor who turned around and said that i cannot give it to you so you were following the protocol that the doctor demanded at the same time you were in communion with jesus you were in a constant fellowship with the with with the word of god i i i noticed that you you mentioned that you were doing you were saying the reciting the divine mercy chaplet you were spending time in adoration in your personal prayer you were also engaging in the in the bible studies that were happening online you, you mentioned that you took uh, part in the uh, uh, happy families uh, word of god sharing where papa johnson had been sharing so you were continually in that presence of god and then no doubt Psalms 97 5 worked for you. Mountains melted like wax in the presence of the Lord. Whilst you continue to be in God's presence, no mountain could continue to remain in your body because that scripture tells us that mountains melt in the uh, melt like wax. Many of us, when we know of the scripture, also get into a position and when we say that uh, mountain melts like wax, but the, the, the important part is which says that at the presence of the Lord. If I only say mountain men like wax, but I don't, I, I don't attempt to stay in the presence of the Lord. I am not fellowshipping with the word of God. How will the mountain melt? The mountain is not melting because you are saying mountain men like wax. The mountains melt because you are continuing to stand in God's presence. So it's like uh, if you have a, a, a wax candle and you put it in the flame, the, the fire will melt the wax, right? Or you, you, you light the candle uh, and... The, the flame will lead to the melting of the candle. But if you only hold the uh, hold the candle, it won't melt just because you're holding it. So in, in the same way, just because you are saying mountains melt like wax, the mountains won't melt. And this uh, why I'm saying this is for the benefit of uh, my brothers and sisters who are on this call or who would be listening in. When you speak scripture promises, the important thing for us to understand is that we need to get into God's presence. We need to fellowship with the word of God. And that's when, whilst we are in his presence, every mountain melts like wax. I would also like to connect uh, through your testimony, sister, uh, Mark eleven twenty four. You said you were speaking that your, your treatment will end by December. So there is a beautiful connect with uh, Mark 11, 24 and also Habakkuk 2, 2 and 3. Therefore, I say unto you, what things soever you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have 
them. So, so did this word become flesh in you, sister, sister Piedar? Yes. Because you kept on yes. saying this, and and also you you saw yourself finishing the the treatment by December so that you could get home. So it was like you had already made a vision for yourself that you are getting back home by end of December. That you don't need to continue there any longer. That vision that you made for yourself. Also came to pass, Sister uh, Piyadar. Would you like to read this Habakkuk two verses two and three? For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come. It will not tarry. It it so happens, and I'm sure Sister uh, Cassie and Sister Celestina, who are on on the panel along with me, who are also ministering to a lot of people, will agree that when the word of God is ministered to a particular person, uh, it is received with a lot of uh, you know uh, delight. However, maybe like you know within a day or two, the person will come back and say. No, you, you. We prayed yesterday, but the situation is the same. No, but we prayed yesterday, but the situation has got worse. But here, the 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 uh, scripture Habakkuk two three says that for the vision is yet for an appointed time. At the end, it shall speak and it shall not lie. It it, it will not delay. It it is there, and this is in the Old Testament. We see that Habakkuk two verses two and three is in the Old Testament, and we are now in the New Covenant. The appointed time is now. Hebrews eleven one tells us that now faith is the substance of things hoped for, evidence of things not seen. So when I speak of faith, it is the now. It is in in the present context. It's not what faith I had yesterday or what faith I will have tomorrow. It talks of faith now. So we need to believe that that appointed time is now. So when I I, I endure. And I wait with patience. I'm surely seeing this uh, scriptures coming flesh in my physical body with a complete manifestation of healing. Again, uh, I'll just like to take you, Sister Sister Piedad. You you mentioned that you were taking part in these Happy Families uh, Bible class. Could you um, briefly tell? The participants, how listening to the teachings uh, has helped you, uh, you, you know, uh, pray with scriptures and uh, claim the scripture promises over your life because you know it it really um, would help others to understand because many a times we do say prayers we we say prayers which we speak uh, over and over again multiple times and sometimes we feel oh I have said this rosary. Or uh, nine times in a day, I have said this nine times in a day for nine days, but uh, nothing seems to be changing. So a lot of focus remains on the count. How many times do I say it, or how many times have I already said it? Uh, so these are the kind of things that come into the mind of people, and we do have people who say, "Okay, uh, uh, this scripture you said to say how many times do I have to say? Hundred, two hundred, you know." It looks like uh, is there any particular magic number that I have said it for those many number of times and I'm sorted. So, uh, sister, if you can throw some light uh, for for the benefit of our listeners, for them to understand that how listening to the word of God and using the scripture promises to pray and claim for yourself made that difference in in your journey of healing from something which seemed like too late. To, to the glory of God, wherein you are in the pink of health today. Uh, the word of God is living. So as you said, people may think I have to say it hundred times. You can say it once is enough if you have that faith, because G the word of God, Jesus's word, is living word, and Jesus's promises are true. When I say, "By the wounds of Jesus, I am healed," it is done that time. If I have faith, the the word of God does not make me say 10 times this by the wounds of Jesus I am healed if I have faith in Jesus that Jesus can heal me now it will happen now only thing I have to accept it that Jesus has done it now already for me and wait for the Lord our time and the Lord's time is not the same I have to wait for the Lord but I know that he has done it already the manifestation may come later so the word of God is much better to pray then to pray the what I have experienced after being now in the word of God, I tell you the truth till today, I 
I, I get into Adnan. These days, the retreat was going on go in Goa. Now, what I do, I just plug into my ear, earphones and I go on listening the word of God. Then the happy families in the evening, there are there are uh, uh, Bible classes from there. I, I listen to the word of God. And that itself heals us when we listen to the word of God, even from the mouth of somebody else, goes on healing us. And there's no need yes. of me saying that I have to say it 10 times or 100 times. No, but it is that moment said and done. In, in other words, like you said, uh, and, and is written in Psalms 145 verses 13, it says, the Lord is faithful to all his promises. So when the Lord has said, said by his wounds you are healed, he's faithful to that promise. When the Lord has said that you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you, he you can do everything to Christ. When he says that he will supply all your needs, when he has written there, he is faithful to his word. So none of that fails, but it is the renewal of our mind. And when we renew our mind, that renewal of our mind happens when we get the understanding of the word of God. Because we do not have the understanding, because we do not have the knowledge, at times we tend to waver when situations become difficult. We, we can get to doubt, we can get to a position of Oh, uh, it, it has actually, I started praying, it got worse. Better I don't pray. At least it was manageable. There are many people who come, especially in case of uh, marriage trouble. When the spouse is praying for the other partner. Uh, maybe the person was drinking. Maybe the person was in smoke or uh, some kind of uh, violence. And the, pers the, the one person starts praying. And uh, many a times we've seen this with, with women. Uh, they come back and say, earlier he was drinking less. Nowadays he's drinking much more. So what is happening is the, the there is disturbance in that person's life. So the enemy, when he's getting agitated, now when, when this person started operating in love, when the person starts operating in faith, it's just like, you know, when the person is, is drowning, the person will uh, do a lot of body movements, raise the hands up and down, try and get uh, uh, attention. It's just like that. When the enemy is supposed to exit, it will make a lot of noise. And amidst that noise, it will seem like the situation is getting worse. But actually, it is a clue for us that the miracle is just around the corner. When it is getting bad and it looks like it is really testing time, that's actually the, the, the threshold point. Beyond that, the enemy cannot really wait. It has to exit. It will make all the possible discomfort, noise and, and chaos, making you lose your faith. But when you are able to hold on in those moments, that's when you receive that victory that Jesus has come and given you. As as uh, you, you mentioned that, you know, you will uh, not die, but live to give glory to God. Since I, I'd like to say that Sister Pieda, she has always been a blessing surely by her calling but now through this experience uh, of sickness wherein she's grown so much more in the love of god now she is doing her best to share this gospel to others through her um, she herself is ministering but may, there are many uh, referral cases that she comes with when she comes to know that there are people with cancer or any other trouble she gives referral calls uh, she blessed me with an op with a wonderful opportunity to go and share the gospel of Christ with the elderly mamas uh, in the home. Uh, she requested me for the white books for the uh, for the inmates of the home. For all those that are listening, you know, so you imagine how focused sister was on the word of God. How much she remained in the presence of God. It got her a victory. But she did what the word of God told her. She kept to the instruction. Sister Simitra also repeated. She was constantly in the presence of our Lord. And you know, we all know Oh, there's only one thing that pleases the Lord, our faith. So what I can see is that there was no fear at all. Perfect love cast it out all fear. So she was so, so much um, in the perfect love of the Father. That's what gave her the strength to, you know, continue in that word. So my dear brothers and sisters, so many of you who are listening in now or may tune in uh, to listen to this recorded session may get similar report or a similar consultation from the doctor which says, oh, but all of this has happened, but you have come late. Uh, this could have happened, but why didn't you, why did you delay? You could have come earlier. So, you know, these things put in, uh, bring in doubt, bring in fear and, and, and to a great extent leads to people losing out on their hope. So people come to a space of hopelessness, but 
because sister you were focused on the written word of god you understood the love of god the, the abba father's love for you you were it's like you no know, you, you you've been like that the man who built his house on the rock him the storm it beat on the house but it stood it down so you you were really um, so so grounded uh, and uh, focused on the word of god because your foundation was on 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 the word of god and the love of god that we have experienced this storm which would have easily uh, led so many to to lose hope and succumb to the to to the infirmity it it really allowed you to come out so victorious and if you were going through your treatment up until a year back anybody who's looking at you was who's seeing you so healthy full of life full of energy cannot say that you know you just a year back have gone through the whole process of a uh, period of uncertainty and and being like you know all those things in uh, what, what what the doctor said so all glory and praise to uh, god so i request you sister apia that if you could make a small prayer releasing that anointing in you uh, upon our listeners to stay on the word of god stay focus on 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 the gospel of christ and receive their their inheritance because god is not partial jesus i can do all things through you who strengthens me may this be the message to all who are on this platform today that your promises are true you never fail us you uphold us your mercy towards each of your children is great unimaginable by us when storms come lord help us to know that you are walking towards us on just as you walked on the sea help us not to lose hope help us not to lose faith but trust in you at every moment knowing that your hand is reaching to us you are by our side you are around us you walk before and behind us and there is nothing to be worried nothing to fear because you are a victorious god who has won the victory over death and if you have jesus won victory nothing can touch us your power is given to each one of us and you ask us to use that power that authority that which you have given us over our lives and over the lives of those who come in contact with us help us lord to make use of the power and the authority that you have given us and never to be shaken or be frightened of anything that looks negative in our life we make this prayer through the same christ our lord amen amen amen, amen.